afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, honorable speaker, thank you, leader. Thank you for attending this uh, on a Friday late afternoon, this conference, where the uh, holiday has been started in, uh, in Vienna and Austria. People are rushing towards to their uh, winter destination. But we are sitting here and discussing the very important uh, topic of interfaith harmony. I have just uh, want to share with you that the, the journey of interfaith harmony or that uh, resolution has started in the UN in 1999. I will just quote it very quickly, two, three, uh, five, six, seven uh, uh, resolutions which uh, have started resolution 53 to 43 on 13 September 1999 on the declaration and program of action related to a culture of peace uh, 4, September, uh, 4 November 2002 to concerning the promotion of the culture of peace and non-violence, 19 December 2003 on the promotion of religious and cultural understanding, harmony and cooperation, and 20 October 2005 on a global agenda for dialogue among civilization, 10 November, uh, this was the fifth resolution within the, the eight, nine years, uh, 10 November 2009 on the Alliance of Civilization and 7 December 2009 on the promotion of interreligious and intercultural dialogue, understanding and cooperation for peace and on 18 December that was the, the, the beginning of our journey on the elimination of all forms of intolerance and discrimination based on religious or belief and subsequently the Interfaith Harmony Week was uh, first uh, proposed at the UN by His Excellency uh, King Abdullah II of Jordan on 23rd September 2010. And here we have started our journey and we are meeting today again every year on the first week of uh, February we discuss uh, these issues. Uh, I, will, I will take the floor and invite our next speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Zikria Selkdani. Born in North Macedonia, study Islamic theology with a focus on Islamic philosophy at the Al Azhar Prestige University in Cairo, Egypt, and the Marmara University in Istanbul. Has a PhD degree in Islamic study with a focus on Islamic uh, mysticism at Heidelberg University, uh, Germany. Since 2014, he's a, he is a professor of Islamic religious education at the University of Innsbruck. Since November 2019, <coughs> Professorship for Islam in the Contemporary Society at the Institute for Islamic Theology, Theological Study at the University of Vienna. Very impressive CV, Professor Florizio. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation to speak about the challenges of uh, Islam and Europe in European context. I will try to read my my speech and hope that I will finish in 10 minutes. Um, the world has changed rapidly during the last couple of years. Globalization is one of the main reasons why the world has moved closer to it than ever before. In addition to a deliberately promoted globalization, there are even more shifts influenced by other factor factors. It is first and foremost migration movements and the sector Subsequent arrival of refugees, which have put Europe in the position of dealing with major and existential challenges. The growing number of people who have migrated from different parts of the world will inevitably cause the increase in religious and cultural plurality in Europe. In addition to the well known <coughs> religious and cultural tradition, there are no, now more and more people with a different religion and religious and cultural tradition views in Europe. This has caused uncertainty in society. A key, a key factor for the dislike of religious and cultural diversity are the one-sided reports on the, of the media. Right-wing parties have also profited from this extraordinary situation so that they are able to enforce their own concerns with, which would not have been possible under normal circumstances. Especially when we talk about Islam, there is a complete change after the horrible terror attacks from 9-11. This change of uh, perception leads to the assumption that Islam is a religious tradition that does not confirm with the Western understanding of religion. The only possible consequences of this is the conflicts between Islam
Islam and the Western world are inevitable. This very problematic assumption has a great impact on current debates in regard of Islam in Europe. Despite of this unthinking presumption, which is founded on the inevitable clash of civilizations, one must admit that, with some few exceptions, two worlds collide due to the presence of Muslims in Europe, especially of those who have migrated now. On the one hand, we have a world which religions, in which religion still has some kind of sovereignty, of interpretation, and continues to play a role in everyday life. On the other hand, on the other, the European side, there dominates a secularized world in which religion is of lower importance and is forced into a marginal position. The two different worlds could profit from this encounter. However, both need to be aware that this might include challenges which have to be overcome to ensure a peaceful cooperation and coexistence. In addition to challenging fields, which I will focus on later, there are still a lot of obstacles which make living together and the integration into the new situation complicated. A difficult shared history, stereotypes which have been cultivated on both sides for centuries, and the activities of radical Islamists on the one hand and right-wing people on the other seem to confirm the prejudice about the other cultures, or the other cultures. These barriers will not be disrupted merely by the presence of Muslims in Europe. Quite the contrary could be the case if no active efforts are made to both sides to overcome the century-old attitudes. In regard to the topic of this speech, one can say that it is in our hands whether the counter in Europe will be productive or not. Both sides are responsible for a peaceful coexistence I will therefore subsequently focus on the challenges and opportunities both for Europe and the Muslim living here. Of course, this dichotomy between Europe and Muslim is not something what we should do because the Muslims can be also part of Europe. But I just, because the title of my speech is Europe and Muslims in Europe, I have to make this division that is not always right correctly, but just to be understood better. What are the challenges for Europe? I mean, in 10 minutes you cannot uh, tell all these challenges, but I just want to focus on some points. Um, for a long time, it has come naturally to Muslims to consume the, theolo the theological thoughts they had brought from their home countries. Religious organizations founded by European Muslims have accepted this transfer of theological ideas. These thoughts have been spread in ethnically divided mosques by imams who have been taught in a non-European context as well as in their mother tongue and who did not know any German. No one has taken offense of this led to a theological and personal dependence on foreigner countries which lasts until today. Only with the rise of religious motivated violence uh, from Muslim uh, fundamentalists in the last uh, years, uh, there has been a growing sensibility in the society in Europe that the Muslims also need a theological um, uh, framework here at the universities uh, in Europe. So if we see the actual situation, there are some challenges, I made here four points, that are really crucial for the European society with dealing with Islam and to make sure uh, a peaceful coexistence in Europe. First of all, Islam should be seen as any other religion. Putting Islam into the perspective of essentialism is neither scientifically supportable nor beneficial for the development of Islam in European context. As with other religions, Islam is shaped by diversity and different ways of interpretation. It is incredibly dangerous to view one of Islamic versions, especially when it is the most radical, as the authentic and to marginalize all other approaches. Secondly, 
it is very important to keep in mind not to view Muslims and Islam distinctly through the lens of terror carried on the name of Islam. Islam should also not be seen as a religion existing only in groups of Muslim immigrants and their mosques, organization in closed of sub societies in some regions of Europe. Third, it is also another major challenge for Europe to not turn it back, its back on values like democracy and the separation of both <laughs> state and religion and also the rule of law. The quality as well as the quantity of tendencies for a special treatment of Islam and Muslims has increased in the last few years. This approach would not only prohibit an integration into society, but also pave uh, the way for, for a greater harm that we know in Europe in the past years. Four, the challenge is therefore mainly to present a concept which is based on scientific research and which can be implemented together with the affected people. Muslim presence in Europe is a great opportunity also if the situation is managed and guided from the beginning. It is a great chance to reassess one's own values because we are always also in Europe uh, in Austria speaking about use, uh, about Austrian values, we don't know which values we mean when we speak about Austrian values or European values because there are different groups of values. So the presence of the Muslims can uh, make us do, to rethink which values do we mean when we speak about the European or the Western values. Muslims can also contribute to a new European identity, which at this time does not make quick progress. Contrary to the national identities, which are rigid and hard to change, a new European identity could offer a great opportunity for integrating all people who live in European society. But now, what is it for the Muslim side? In spite of the current, current unfortunate, unfavorable atmosphere against Islam, Europe is still a great chance for Muslims to advance their cultural and religious tradition. In contrast to some other countries, Muslims in Europe have better conditions and more liberty to critically analyze their own tradition without having any fear. In this regard, Muslims are required to take this opportunity to critically deal with those Islamic religious sources which make it hard for Muslims to be integrated in a European context, especially Important are theological explanations and the cultivation of the religious and cultural diversity of human rights of the secular and democratic constitutional state. Consequently, an Islamic theology with a, with a European tendency could emerge which would respect the needs of Muslims in Europe and would not stand in opposition to the values of the Western or European world. Considering the many challenges which, with which we are faced, there is the necessity of a mutual understanding and of a differentiated approach to the existing problems in the line with the valued account. Because, and that's my last sentence, because our future will not depend on the set challenge, set challenges, but on the answers which we will find again. Thank you very much.